So guys, welcome to Glasgow, welcome to Fright Fest. Are you excited about your screening this afternoon? Very excited. This is going to be great and, uh, like I was saying, well worth the flight. This theatre looks amazing and we've heard so many good things about Fright Fest. So. Tell us about hashtag Chad Gets the Axe. Um, hashtag Chad Gets the Axe. Um, it's kind of a found footage type film. Um, it's based on a short of the same name that mm -hmm. um, premiered a few years ago and did quite well. And uh, we decided we wanted to kind of go the uh, feature out with it because it had a lot of potential. And um, yeah, it is about four influencers who go to a supposedly kind of haunted, murderous location called Devil's Manor. And uh, it turns out that the uh, axe wielding cult member is still there and kind of hunts them down on their live stream. I mean, I, when I saw it, I didn't know you guys and I didn't know anything much about the film. But what struck me about it very strongly, and this is why we're premiering it today for Fright Fest, it's a very kind of caustic commentary on the way the world is on their phones, on Instagram and Twitter, which we're all guilty of. But it's, tell us a bit about that, the, the sort of politic behind the film. Yeah, well, What's interesting is with it, it's like you have these social media influencers who are probably, our characters are not the best people, admittedly, <laughs> but... <laughs> no, definitely not, definitely not. But, you know, you also have this kind of Greek chorus of commentators that, you know, are kind of egging it on and, you know, cheering for them to die and trying to promote their whole stuff. And so it's like, not to sound too pretentious, but it's like, is the audience the real monster? Because... They're kind of, there's this circle of kind of like dehumanization going on where, you know, the influencers are doing a bigger thing to get a reaction, but, you know, it's not in a void. It's like, if people weren't watching, then they wouldn't be doing these things. So um, I kind of wanted to make something where at first you're kind of like, oh, screw these influencers, kind of cheer, you know, and then maybe you actually start to, you know, hopefully kind of feel bad for them by the end. And maybe Absolutely, you're not, yes. and, yeah. you know, and, and oh, at the same time, if you want to just laugh and, um, you know, mock them as they are hunted down in acts that's completely cool to and me. how was it technically to make the picture uh yeah i mean we, all of us shot we're holding the cameras the entire time the whole thing is shot on an iphone um which is interesting that's how we shot the short as well uh, the differences between the short and the features there's now the three more influencers involved so there's more cameras mm. um and it was it was it was an adjustment for the actors i think it was harder for the dp of the project who had to sort of trust uh, the actors to get the frame right and get the shot right. Um, and there was a lot of takes where we would do it and it, you know, it'd be like, great, great emotion, fantastic. Uh, make sure you get, you know, that light in the background. That's really important that we see that. It's like, okay, great. Another thing to, to focus on. But uh, all in all, it wasn't that much of an adjustment. I think with the actors, us being in our, you know, our generation, we were pretty accustomed to filming ourselves anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, it wasn't, so complicated, but it was an interesting sort of challenge. And was it quite freeing as an actor to work in that in that style? I mean, yeah. I mean, there was what was particularly freeing is you know with a, a, a typical film set, there's different lighting setups, there's different you know you really got to get the the angles right for things. But with this, it's all kind of meant to be gritty and, and live and and so because of that really what you just have to worry about is making sure you're not shaking the camera too much so they can see your actual performance mm. um, but that was all that's also interesting is depending on who's holding the camera uh, you get a kind of different experience because yeah. of what type of influencer you're currently presenting at the time and that also changes the comments that are happening at the same time whose audiences are tuning in to whose live stream and tell us about the casting obviously spencer here is terrific in the picture Thank did you have specific uh folks in mind for each of the roles we had a certain idea of who we wanted like it was not necessarily important for the characters to be like likable but they needed to be watchable because mm. if you're going to be with these people even for 80 minutes you know you don't want to be so annoyed by them that you're just done and um what's funny i think when casting the short we had some people come in that were very much like alpha influencers. You could put them all and they could have competed sure. with Jake Paul or something. And Spencer came in and my main thing with him initially was like, are you douchey enough? I was literally, <laughs> so I yeah. think it's like a compliment. I think I literally no, had you do one final call. I'm like, just lay it on because you seem like such a nice guy. I'm not <laughs> buying that you're yeah. this Chad. And um, he, you know, brought out his inner douche bag and um, yeah. totally... Nailed that. And uh, yeah, same with everyone else. Like we wanted to keep them, you know, likable enough, watchable, but you know, because you don't, 
ideally, and people, once again, are allowed to just cheer for all these people to get the axe. That's awesome, great, more power to the audience. But in theory, you want to kind of hopefully like these people and feel a little bad. I think you've them. succeeded so. in spades. Spencer, tell us about your background. What have you been in before? Oh, wow. Yeah, I mean, I, I mainly come from a, a theater background from Minneapolis, Minnesota. But um, yeah, what's funny about this project is the short was one of the first things I auditioned for in Los Angeles years ago. Mm. Um, and it was, uh, I was on another project with a friend of Travis's and that, you know, he was like, you might be good for Travis's short for this. I did that. And to see it grow, I mean, very few actors get to be a part of the short process and then the actual feature. When we were, when he was telling me about it, it was over COVID that we were going to make the feature version of Chad. Uh, it was one of those like, yeah, all right, I'll believe it when, <laughs> when I see it, you know, just getting anything made. But, um, uh, when, when it all was said and done, like, I, it's been a really awesome process and, and going back on, on the casting as well, they were looking and I mean, casting for the feature, I know we were, we auditioned people with like actual social media followings, like, like really looking into maybe, um, casting almost method, <laughs> like, yeah, casting like real, did. real yeah. influencers, but what ended up, I think, prevailing and what we've been recognized for at other festivals is the the quality of the acting in the cast and how mm. we all work together. Yeah. And what's next for both of you? Well, we're... Can we talk about it? We're working on a show. Yeah, we're shooting a... Um, we have another um, proof of concept short we're doing for a, a feature, uh, another horror comedy feature I wrote. So we're shooting a short um, okay. for that. Are you going to stay in the found footage style or are you going to... We're breaking out a little okay. for this one. We're going to go... Right. I'd like to think the uh, sensibility is kind of the same with, you know, the horror comedy mix, but this is going to be shot a little more um, traditionally. So Traditional. that's, that's the next... Camera setups and... Yeah, actually, yeah, not all phones, yeah. not... Right. Yeah, so, you know, a little more lighting, mix it up a little, but, yeah, we're super excited about... Mm. about Very that. good. And finally, uh, distribution. What's happening on all festivals? Festivals or distribution? Where can folks see... Hashtag Chad gets the acts that aren't seeing it today at Frightfest. Well, we're in talks with a couple different distributors and we're aiming for a, a fall release. So, um, you know, I guess I'll let you know when we actually have, when everyone can see it and when we can do the full push. And then uh, same with um, festivals. We've had some really nice requests for screeners from places. So we're going to see, um, it's going to play in some um, other horror fests. And then we're going to hear back from, for some people to see what other festivals. But sure. ideally, hope we're going to, you know, um, this is, Super excited about the international premiere here. Go from there and, and hopefully get it out to everybody in the fall is the plan. Well, we really, really wish you well with that. And thank you so much for being brilliant and supportive. And thank you for exploring Scotland as well. <laughs>